Go ahead and get started. Okay, thanks for having me so much, everyone. Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy this beginning of 2021. Uh, so today I'm gonna to talk about trading. And as David said, my name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. So what do I do? I teach people how to trade gaps, and I run a live trading room Monday through Friday in the morning where I trade gaps and I day trade gaps, which is equity trading, and I also do options. Okay, but everything that I do is based on the gap. And I also appear on television. So you'll see me on Fox News, CBS, uh, made the rounds on a bunch of different places. And I mostly talk about stocks in the market. And the big watch for tonight, I talked about this last week on TV, is Zoom. So Zoom has earnings out tonight. And if we have time at the end of the lecture here today, after I'm done with the presentation, we'll take a look at Zoom, we'll take a look at the chart, and we'll see uh, what that possibly could do this evening because most stocks that report earnings gap. And again, I'm gonna go over today what exactly a gap is. So the topic for today though is advanced technical analysis. So everything I do looks at a chart, okay? And again, if you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype, or any of these places. So if you've been trading, or maybe you have just thinking about trading, you probably have the market bug. I got this market bug a long time ago now, back in 2008. I met a man actually on a dating website, which was really funny, and he told me what he did, he traded. And at that time I was doing mortgages and I was looking for a new career. And I said, wait a minute, this looks like something I could do. And this looks interesting to me. I never traded in my life. And I didn't know what I was getting into. But once I was bitten by the market bug, you know, I was bit. And if you've been trading and attempting to become successful as a trader for a very long time, you know exactly what I mean. You want to do it. You're excited to, when you think about the market or think about making money in the market. And even if you're losing and you've been failing, you still have that mindset like, I want to do this. I want to do this. I really want to do it. And that's important because that is basically the motivation that pushes you forward to continue learning and to be able to achieve the success that you need. It takes time. I don't have never met anyone that actually started trading and made money right away and just never looked back. That's just not realistic and it doesn't normally happen that way. So many people go through many different uh, classes and systems and things till they figure out exactly how to do it and also what works for them. So I'm gonna explain to you what I do. And again, what I do is focus on gaps and mostly morning trading. So you'd have to be able to be focused in the morning into the open between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time to do what I do. And again, it's, it's all about making it work for yourself, particularly if you wanna make a transition into becoming a full-time trader, although you can trade part-time. Like, like I said, I do options. You don't have to babysit the options trades. You can put on an options trade, you can even put in as soon as you buy it, you can put a sell order to sell it at a certain price and you really don't have to babysit it. But if you really want to jump into it and actively, actively day trade um, each day, I do have a trading room each morning that I, that I do the equity trading. So if the market bug has you, it's for a reason what? You want to do this, you want to make money and probably you want to make more money in the market than you are making at your current job, okay? So with COVID now, we're almost a year into this crazy, crazy thing. A lot of people are working from home. So people, more people are trading because they can trade now from home and also do their job on the side. So it really has opened up a whole new world for many, many people who never considered trading because they really couldn't where they were doing their job. And now they can because they're working from home. And people right now may be working from home still for a very, very long time. So if you have the opportunity to actually be at home and do this and take the time and learn it, you can learn it now still this year in 2021. But the most important thing is for you to know is that trading isn't gambling. And I can't stress this enough. I've talked about this several times in the last month, this GME, um, and I'm sure everybody knows about this if you've even watched TV for at, at, at any type of business channel in the last few weeks. There was a group on Reddit that bought this stock and it had a big, big move up, a big jump up, which is here, which was this big move up. Didn't quite get to $500 on the live day, but then it collapsed and went all the way back down to this price point here where it was previous to the jump. So a lot of people bought this stock didn't know what they were doing, 
bought it and they bought it because what? Because so-and-so said to buy it because they saw it in a chat room because everyone was talking about it on the news, okay? So the reality is this was just plain gambling. There was no strategy here whatsoever at all to buy this stock whatsoever, okay? While some people did make a lot of money in this when this jump up happened, a lot of people lost. And there are still people in this long that think it's going to go back to 500 or 1,000. My assessment is that is not going to happen. Um, and, and this is very, very sloppy now as far as how this has been trading, basically because of all the news coverage. And, and the stock's been halted so many days and so many times. I don't know how anyone can stand trading it. But the important factor is that trading is not gambling, okay? And you have to have a plan of action when you trade. What do I mean? I mean you have to have a strategy. So it's not just how much money you're going to risk per trade, while that is important. It's also why are you taking the trade? What is the strategy you're using for the trade? Okay, and again, as I was saying earlier, I do gaps. It's based on advanced technical analysis. We're going to talk about that today. There were some gaps in GME. I'm not going to take the time to go over them here because it's pointless. But this is just a great, great example here how a lot of people gambled in this. A lot of people lost, okay, and a lot of people are going to continue to lose in this as well, um, who are gambling in a, in a stock, taking a trade in something without knowing why, just because people are doing it. So ultimately, how do you become successful trading? It's, it's, it's not, I shouldn't say it's easy, but it's also not that hard. It's not as hard as people think it is, but I wouldn't say it's like easy, like it's gonna take you a day, okay? You have to have a foundation for why you are trading, okay? What is the reason you are taking XYZ trade? And ultimately what I do is, okay, and what technical analysis is, okay, is looking at past price data to predict future priced moves in a stock. So like if you know something is going to move higher, you will go long. If you know a stock is going to move lower, you will short it, okay? I do do longs and shorts. And in reference to options, if you knew something was moving higher, you'd buy a call. If you knew something was moving lower, you would buy a put. Okay, that's a short and an option. So how do you become successful? You have a system that you use consistently and use a system consistently that has a high win ratio of success because that's very important. You have to have more winners than losers. You will have some big winners, but you should really look at every day as just a trade that you're taking to make money. And it adds up over time because if you have a lot of winners over the course of a week or a month or a year, you're going to be up. You're going to make money. Nobody has a 100% win ratio. I certainly don't. Uh, if I did, I'd risk my whole account in every trade I take, and I don't. So I ascertain my risk based on the probabilities. I do my trades based on high probability. I say this has high odds of working, therefore I am taking this trade. Or if I don't think it has high odds of working, if it has low odds of working, then guess what? I don't take the trade, okay? So is it about odds? And it's about predicting where somebody's gonna go. Because ultimately what happens in the market is you have buying and selling. You have buying and selling, okay? So you need a strategy, you need a focus, and you need a system. Now, if you happen to be lucky enough to have a mentor, great. But if you don't and you have a good strategy and you learn it and know how to do it, you can still make it without a mentor. I think I make it easy for people uh, by having the live trading room Monday through Friday and the options newsletter as well. But once people take my class, they can trade on their own. They don't need me. I don't hold anything back in the class. I teach everything that I know. Um, and you can do it on your own. I think having a mentor, again, makes it easier for people, especially people to make money after the class, but it is not necessary. And ultimately, trading is an independent activity. While there's many trading forums, like I talked about with the Reddits, and lots of rooms are open, my room is not. My room is closed off. People cannot make discussions in the room. I'm in charge. I'm the boss. I'm the one calling the trades. Trading is an independent activity. Nobody cares if you win or lose, but you. So you have to look at it as something. And if you have that entrepreneurial spirit, then trading is really something that you can get behind. I was always like that. I mean, that's why I got into trading in the first place. And obviously, that's why I'm a successful business owner, too. And prior to that, I did mortgages, which really I worked for myself as well because it was a mortgage broker. So it was 100% commission. So as hard as I worked, the more money I made. And that's just the way that my personality is. And if you are someone like that, where you enjoy working for yourself, and again, you like to be independent, then trading is something that really may appeal to you or that you want to look into doing. 
Now let's get back to here where we're talking about, about technical analysis versus fundamentals. Now, technical analysis is looking at a chart. This is a day chart. This is a chart of the spot. And I just went back here um, basically three months till December. So this is, the SPY is the ETF for the S&P, okay? The market's been very strong. Despite the fact that we've been in COVID the last year, the market has made multiple, multiple, multiple brand new highs. So technical analysis looking at past price data. So this was Friday's bar at one point. This wasn't the close. I just clipped this here. It was in the afternoon. But anyways, this was back in here, the 26th. So you can look at what? Past price data, which is what? To the left. To the left, to the left. Up here was when we made new highs. That was back in the middle of February. And all along the way, you can keep going back here and seeing what we did. This was January, start of the year, back in here. So technical analysis is looking at past price data and, to, and you look at it and you use the information to predict where are we gonna go next? Because again, if you know where somebody's gonna go next, you can make money if you take the trade before the move occurs. Ultimately, what I do is playing momentum. It's momentum and gaps but I am looking to get the momentum so that I can get a big move so I can make money. So people also look at fundamentals. Now, I don't focus on fundamentals. I have to talk about it sometimes on TV when they give me the topic. Melissa, we were talking about the unemployment numbers today or tomorrow or whatever. Then I have to address it. But ultimately, I don't use it in my system. I don't use it in my strategy. And it really doesn't play a factor in the decisions that I make and what trades that I take, okay? Now, if it helps you and helps your conviction to look at fundamentals and technicals together, fine. But the problem is when the fundamentals do not match up with the technicals, it can set you off to make bad decisions then or incorrect decisions, I should say, where you would lose in a trade. And I've got to say, since March of 2020 through, it's March 1st today of 2021, we're not quite a year since the, the 15 days to slow the spread turned into 12 months to slow the spread. But the reality is that the fundamentals of what's happening in the economy, in the United States, and quite frankly, the world, do not match up with what is happening in the stock market. Now, people say this doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. Look at the unemployment rate. Duh, 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 duh. We have the number coming out Friday. If you've been trading based on fundamentals, you wouldn't be long this market. You would have missed many, many opportunities to make money as the market continued to gap up, continue to make new highs, and continue to get bought. Since the March lows back, that was like the end of 2020, once we dropped and fell and swung around, okay? Because many economies, in fact, I live in New York City. This is one of the largest cities in the United States. Our economy has completely tanked. It is nowhere near coming back, and it's responsible for about 10% of the GDP of the whole entire country. And New York City is dead. Okay, so when you look at fundamentals and you look at technicals, very often they do not match up. Same thing, and I'm just going to talk about the Zoom. Well, everyone was probably assuming Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Zoom has got to report good tonight. It's got to be good. Everyone's Zooming. Well, first of all, I'm not in a position in Zoom. I'm waiting until it reports. But second of all, it may have fabulous earnings and it may sell off. So that happens a lot too. Okay. So looking at the price, looking what's happening in a live time right now and using the past price data is how you can make decisions about getting the trades. The problem is that many people don't understand what to look for, how to analyze it. And that is a skill. It is a skill that I teach in my 16 hour class. We're not going to learn that whole thing here today. Today is an introduction to see a little bit what I do. Okay. And it is important to just get your head around the fact that many times, fundamentals lag in what's happening okay so uh, uh, technically speaking okay so again what is technical analysis technical analysis is using price patterns on a chart so i read charts i have japanese candlesticks on my charts and i read them and i predict where something's going to go based on the price that it's currently trading at in the gap and i make a determination if i'm going to go long the stock then or if i'm going to short it or the market because sometimes i do play etfs in the SPY and the QQQs. But trading is fun. Once you feel confident in a strategy, it is fun. And to be honest with you, I think it's a great career right now in the situation that we're in with the world because you can work from home. You need a trading account. 
You need a computer with a live internet connection, but you can be anywhere in the world and trade. You do not have to be in the United States to trade the US stock market. And if you wanna do options, you don't even need the 25,000 minimum uh, requirement for day trading in a retail account. And there's so many different options out there right now for people even to actively day trade with less than 25,000. There are prop accounts too. And if you have questions about that, you can email me as well. So it's accessible to so many people everywhere over the world Obviously, you have to size yourself according to the size of your cash in your account, what your risk is. Okay, we'll talk about several risk amounts today, beginner risk and advanced risk. You have to use the cash in your account, even if you have a high leverage amount, to determine how much size you're taking. And one of the benefits of doing options is you can have a cash account and you only pay the price of the option. You don't need margin for a cash account. And you can open up an option account with as little as $2,000, okay? So again, feeling confident in what you're doing, making money, feeling the sense of independence and really power, the self, the self-confidence and the and the self, the power that comes within you being able to earn your own money. I mean, look at how many people are unemployed. I think the rate supposedly is gonna come out Friday. They're still thinking it's gonna be under 7%, but above 6% for the US unemployment rate. That's still a heck of a lot of people are out of work in the country. And a long way off where we were, where we were almost at full employment you know, prior to COVID. So if you can make money at your computer, in your home, by yourself, and feel good about what you're doing, it is very, very empowering, okay? And that is what is important, I think, particularly in these times that we are in. So you can unlock the keys to your own success with one strategy. You have to know uh, what you're doing. Uh, somebody saying something about unemployment that only notes the ones they think are worth counting. Well, that's a different discussion for another time, we'll see. But either way, whatever the numbers are, we know that a lot of people are out of work. And Congress is doing nothing, nothing about these stimulus checks that were supposed to come out after the election. People will be lucky if they get them by April. I think that's a stretch now even too. It's most likely even gonna be May, who knows? I mean, again, if you're relying on the government to pay you or for income, you're, you're out of luck, basically. Not that anyone could even pay their rent or mortgage on a $1,400 check. And they're, they're supposed to be 2,000, now they're 1,400, who knows? But that's a long discussion we could talk about another time. Anyways, let's talk about gaps. The strategy that I use is gaps. So gaps are the difference between the close and the open. Very, very simple, there's lots of things that gap. It's figuring out which stocks to trade and which gaps are good which gaps are the quality gaps? That's what I determine in my system. So unlock the keys to your own personal profit potential in the market. Learn how to trade one high income pain strategy gaps. And when I say high income pain, I mean big moves, momentum moves, because that is what you, that's what you need, okay? You know, we can't take, you know, 100,000 shares of something like a hedge fund to get in it. You saw people doing that in the GME. There was a fund in that that was shorted. We can only take several thousand shares. Even if you have a big account, 5,000, 10,000 shares is a lot. We have to get in and out. And what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for playing on the, on the coattails of that big, big, big money, of the big positions that are creating the gap. So I'm not creating the gap. I'm not predicting the gap itself. I'm waiting for the gap. Like we're talking about the Zoom. I don't know if it, where Zoom goes, but I know when I see the Zoom, I'm gonna be able to rate the Zoom and I'm gonna be able to determine where Zoom's gonna go after I see the gap in the Zoom. So gap trading is where the real money moves and momentum of the market take hold. We gapped up in the market today, we're rallying, and a lot of people are probably short this market, thinking that we're gonna fall off the planet and fall and fall and fall. And again, the market's sloppy right now. It's choppy and sloppy and it's sucking people in long and it's sucking them in short and people are ultimately losing, okay? You have to be very picky about what you're trading. Trading gaps makes it possible to trade for a living. Why? Because you can make, make a lot of money in a gap. You only need one gap a day in order to be profitable. And you can take them overnight, sometimes two. And that's what we're doing in the options. I don't do anything that has to do with filling gaps. When I bring up a chart, I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. Anyways, what is a gap? This is just basic, basic, basic. What is a gap? A gap is a difference between the open and the close. So this is back here at the beginning of February. This is the SPY. Market closed here, gapped up. 
So what is a gap? It's just the difference between the close and the open. You have up gaps and down gaps, bullish gaps and bearish gaps. We closed here around 33.76, gapped up. This was to start the month of February, which started out bullish. We made new highs in the, at the beginning of February. So we open here, then up around 380, rally. Okay, momentum was up. You could have bought this, got a nice move, made new highs. Didn't quite get to the 400 number that's looming out there for this market, particularly why, again, the financials are part of the spy. They've made new highs very, very strong. Goldman Sachs is strong. JP Morgan Chase is strong, okay? You're not gonna have the market fall off the planet and the bank, the financials at new highs. It's just impossible. Will not happen. Never gonna happen, okay? And there's been too much buying in those particular symbols. Now you also have bearish gaps. Here's a bearish gap. Market closed here, gap down. Closed up here the night before, roughly around 386, boom. Open in the morning, around 382. So again, what do I do when I get up in the morning? Or sometimes you can do it at night, like I'll probably do it tonight with the Zoom. I look at it and I say, oh, wait a minute here. Let me rate this. So I developed a rating system. It's a 26 point rating system to determine if this is going to continue to go down and sell off, should I short it? Or is this going to get bought? In which case I wouldn't short it. And in the case of this one here, is this going to go up? Should I go long it in a bullish gap? Or is this going to fail? Okay, this did not fail. This went higher and this did not fail. It went lower. So this is a bearish gap and this is a bullish gap. Somebody mentioned gap fills. I do not trade gap fills. They don't work. While sometimes they might work, sometimes everything works. Sometimes you'll be in a Reddit chat room buy something that works. That doesn't mean you should do it all the time. What my strategy and system is about consistency. And I'm following institutional money. Let's take a look at this here. This was a nice one as well. This was Walmart. Walmart closed here. Boom. Right up here around 147. Gap down in the morning here around 138. Rallied, fell, and broke. This was the day after the earnings, and it fell off a cliff. So we did puts in this. We shorted this. This fell, fell, fell. This went to the dream target, which was 130. It was a nice short. In fact, I got out of this a little too early here. But the reality is this is another example of what? Institutional selling selling in the Walmart, selling in the gap. Okay, again, forget that gap fill stuff. That's ridiculous. This was a short. Okay. So one quality strategy is all you need to pay yourself on a regular basis. One of the reasons I'm successful is I've never got off of what I have started to do initially when I started to trade. I had a good foundation of technical analysis when I started. I traded gaps one day and made a lot of money. I didn't had not developed my system at that point, but I said there's something to these things because they move so big and I fell in love with them and then it took me three years to create my system. But it is a great way to make money. And it doesn't matter if you do it as options or day trades and you can even do swing trades in gaps. But it is very, very powerful because of the amount of money that you can make in them and the consistency in them as well. And I really think for day traders, they need to have some big moves in some things when they happen because you will have days where you lose. I have trades that I lose. So the, you have to have the winners make up the ground for the losers and still make money to get ahead. But the market can offer you a real lifelong career if you have a strategy that makes money consistently. That is what people struggle with and they jump from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. I have not done that. I never did that. And I got really good at one thing. And I think people don't give themselves a chance to ever get good at one thing because they give up and they quit. Now that thing that they may be doing may be wrong and may not be working, but you have to find something that works and then you have to stick to it. So what do I do? I'm looking for professional gaps. What is a professional gap? A professional gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. It is called a professional gap because professional traders and investors are making and creating the gap, not Reddits, not a group of a chat room. Professional traders, what do I mean? I mean hedge funds. I mean big banks. I mean big money that's moving it and creating the gap and has the power behind it, which is the money, okay, to actually buy Zoom, push it all the way up to 450 or 500 tonight, or dump their shares if they have the Zoom, because Zoom's been in an uptrend. They could dump it, dump it, and it could gap down to 300. That's big money doing that, okay? Big, big money, and that's what I'm looking for. So in the case of a bullish gap, professionals are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock moves higher in the trading day. So in a bullish gap up, if it rates per my system, I go long. In the case of a bearish gap, professionals are shorting the stock or selling it. Therefore, the stock moves lower in the trading day. So in a bearish gap, if it rates per my system, I'm shorting it. Okay? 
So, this is an example of a bullish gap, Twitter, okay? This thing here closes here, gaps up. Now, this was earnings, okay? This was back on the 10th, feels like a long time ago. We've done this a bazillion times. So we've done calls in this, we've done day trades long in this, this has been higher, it move, move, move. Now we were in calls when Twitter gapped up overnight here. This was news, okay, this was the earnings, this was a gap up, this was news here, but we were in calls that I called they were down actually, but then we got up in the morning, they were up when it rallied, made new highs, flew over 80 and dropped, okay? So this is the bullish gap in Twitter. There is one, here's one. Don't be confused about the fact that that bar is red. This was a gap up, closed here, gapped up. It rallied before it broke. <clears throat> and actually, I think this would have held better on this particular day, this was last Thursday, if the market had not sold off, okay? Here is a bearish gap. Again, we talked about Walmart. It gapped down, closed here, gapped down. Now, you cannot go long every gap up and you can't short every gap down. Here's a good example, why? The day before, the day before the one we did, okay, Walmart actually gapped down and rallied and got bought and had a big bar. This closed here, this gap down. Now this day, this didn't fall. It got bought. So you can't just short every bearish gap. This is a bearish gap that failed. We didn't do it, but this is a bearish gap that worked. We did do it. So you can't just go long every bullish gap and, and short every bearish gap. I don't know what you mean by, I don't understand your second question, Elizabeth. Um, how do you find stocks with gaps? There's a bazillion ways you can find stocks that are gapping, but you have to have charts. You have to have a live platform. You have to have post-market feed and pre-market feed. Okay, you have to have live data where you can find them. And your question too, I don't understand, I'm sorry. Anyways, I named my gap rating system the Golden Gap because it's like finding gold in the market, because you can make a lot of money with them, like the Walmart, and you can trade them and sometimes be in them for days or weeks. And the Twitter is another good example of that too. It's high odds, high odds of working. So on any given week or month, I could have you know up to an 80% win ratio. That's a lot. That means of every 10 trades you take with me, figure eight are gonna lose and two we're gonna win, okay? So when I'm looking at something, I size myself accordingly I use a limit order stop in the equity trades, and when I take an option, I have no stop. Effectively, the risk is the stop. I'm looking to put the odds in my favor. Again, how do I do it? I rate it. If I rate the gap in a rates per my system, 26 point system, then I go long it if it's a bullish gap up. If I rate the system for my 26 point system and it's a bearish gap, like the Walmart, I'll short it, okay? And I might do it as an option and a day trade. Or I might do one or the other. Like, we're not day trading to Amazon, okay? Because that's too expensive, but we would do an option in that if that set up. But the high probability is what counts. It's all about the chart. Everything is about the chart. Again, I'm not looking at the fundamentals. I won't even read what happens in Zoom. Unless somebody emails me and says, you got to go on TV to talk about Zoom, then I'll have to read about it. But otherwise, I won't. I won't read it at all. I'll just look at the gap. I'll see what it's doing. I'll rate it if it's bullish, I'll rate it if it's bearish, and then I'll determine what I wanna do with it, okay? So technicals are so, so important. They're important for the market, they're important for your trades, okay? And that is how you're gonna make money. Um, no, I don't do anything with volume. I just pretty much don't trade stocks that don't have volume. So, I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't do anything with it though. It's no, it doesn't play a factor in my analysis. I just flat out will not trade stocks that have no volume. Like I'm not trading low float stocks. I'm not trading like dirt cheap stocks. Again, because you don't have institutions trading them, okay? Like penny stocks and stuff like that. I don't waste my time with. All right, let's look here at the Twitter. So this was a day trade in the Twitter. This was on 216, it broke out. Now this was after, after the earnings. So remember this closed here, this gapped up, rallied. Closed here, gapped up. Closed here, gapped up, boom. This is the day trade, we did it. Okay, we went long. We entered it at 73, it was a nice move up. We exited at 74, 70. So 
an advanced trader risk in this, which I risk about $2,500 a trade in my equity trades, you could have made $4,780. It's just a day trade, just one trade in there. And to be honest with you, I don't consider this expensive. I don't think this is really expensive here at $73 per share, okay? So again, if you questions them up margin or brokers, you can email me later. But this was a really nice trade here. And it was a pop that went up and beyond and it broke out and it rallied and this is on its own and this really has nothing to do with the market and it was a beautiful move. And it was three days after the earnings. Actually, here you can see it here, it's blown up, 216. Okay. Then we did an option two. Okay, this again, an advanced trader risk cost you 60. If you took 30 contracts, which was a risk of 1700, again, advanced trader, this is a high risk, sold at 525. You could have flipped it around. It's more than 100% return investment. You could have made 79.50. Let's go look at it. So I called the 68 calls in the Twitter February 12th, the day here, the same day we did the equity trade. Okay. Same day here, boom, went, all right? So this, you could have done as calls, or you could have done the equity trade, or you could have done both. It's all based on the bullish gap and the gap rating, okay? So it was a nice breakout play. And again, this is a cheap, cheap cost of the option to me. If you bought one contract, you would have paid what? $260, okay? So anyways, oh, you know, either way, whatever you want to do with these, it's totally, totally up to you, but I do both. It depends on the time you have to day trade. It depends on how many, how many trades you want to take, how much money you want to risk, if you want to hold it overnight. But either way, who makes gaps? Who's creating these gaps in these charts? Again, going back to the foundation, it's large institutional money. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and you play it. Gaps are an event, okay? They create a sense of urgency. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock, people that are in it. They are either forced to sell or they are forced to, to exit a short, in which case it is a buy to cover to get out. Or you may have something called panic buying, which you had a little bit in the Twitter. I'll go back to that chart in a minute. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful because trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. Now, let me just go back up here to this for a second. You wouldn't have something like this. This is before this pop right here at 72 open up at 78 and then go i think the high was like 81 or something it, you wouldn't have something like this go overnight or within you know 24 hours or whatever up ten dollars with that institutional buying that's what created that that's what made it happen oh i don't know why i have 216 here the day was 212 of this it's followed through on 216 this date up there in that chart is wrong i don't know it doesn't matter you're seeing the whole whole last two weeks here where you could have played it but anyways, institutional money bought it here, bought it here. It did buy it here, we're still in it. And then it bought it from here to here. And it even bought it here. How do I know? Well, it flipped. Again, you can't short every gap down. This was a gap down. This wasn't a gap up, but it rallied. Here, this closed, then it gapped down, then it fell and boom, got bought. So this is a very bullish bar actually. Baby tail and a big fat green okay but this started with a gap down okay so anyways this is a very very nice move no volume does not make my decisions a technical analysis price analysis price analysis in the gap makes my decisions volume doesn't make my decisions why because everything i trade has volume anyways every single thing that i do you've heard of twitter <laughs> i'm sure You've heard of Facebook, you've heard of Walmart. They're all companies that everybody knows. You can go shopping at Walmart. It's not weirdo things that nobody knows about. So everything we do, it's, it has volume. And that's why, you know, it's, it's a non-issue for me. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying about technical analysis, it's understanding it, it's learning it, and then doing it. 
it's a skill reading charts and predicting where they're going to go is a skill and again hopefully at the end of time i'm going to give you my two cents on zoom because i'd be making a prediction on it because remember it didn't do anything yet but don't make it harder than it is do not some people just uh, they just I don't know why people just go after something and after something and just keep continually making mistakes and then just feel frustrated by it. There's no reason to make it harder than it is. Sometimes I get up in the morning and there isn't any good trades. Guess what? Then I'm not trading. I can't force anything to happen. We actually went long the spy today. That's what we did. I got out pretty quick, actually. I didn't even get the big move up. This morning I got out fast. I like to trade in the morning in equity trades and get out quick. We had a target of 387. That's basically where I got out. But it ran up. Dream target was 390. It's probably, I don't even know if it's there now. It probably is. But don't make it harder than it is. If the trades are there, do them. If the setup's there, do them. If the gap rate's good, do it. If you take a stop, you take a stop. You can take another trade, okay? But I don't trade all day. And if I'm in an option, I'll go back and look at it in the afternoon or something. But I prefer, I prefer to do one trade a day, okay? So again, we're looking here at the Walmart. This just tells you so much what's going on here in this the the rally the sell-off uh and the continuation now let's go over the trade that we did in this again this was the day of the earnings stock closed here gap down this is on the gap down this was here this is so small i think this was two 218 this was thursday and this was friday yeah anyways push back dropped boom short it get the drop and you could have been in it again through the put and got it down. This is a one minute, but see how it continued. This is into the Friday. Okay. So you can do a day trade in here. You could have done a day trade that you could have done. You could have actually day traded this every day. You could have shorted this every day since that day. We did it two days, but look at it. This is a one minute chart going back for the whole period. Anyways, here was the option we did it. And again, I had an early exit in this because I had it out for an expiration date of 226. And although it's very unusual, the stock broke 130. I had the 140 puts. I got out of it with money and just booked it. But this went huge. This went $10 to the strike. I never questioned myself. And you can never lose money when you get out with profit. But this continued way, way past where I did it. But anyways, on Thursday the 18th, I called the puts in Walmart, the 140 puts. And then on Monday the 22nd, I called the 137 puts and I called them out both out for an expiration date of last Friday. They both fell off a planet. They were huge trades if you held them actually. So advanced trader risk in the first one was what? 270, risking 8,100, sold at 370, could have made three grand. That's a good trade to me. It's money, okay? Advanced, I mean a beginner risk, I'm sorry. 270, again, three contracts, 810 bucks. That's a, that's a good amount. And it could have made $300. Take it, get out. Take it, get out. Boom. But if you held it, it was a big, big trade. Then the Monday we did them, when I saw it was going to follow through, I did a further strike down. This was dirt cheap. A dollar you would have paid, sold for 160, made 4,800. So this is more than 50% return investment. And this was a nice one here. Again, one dollar you could have spent, spent a thousand bucks, made $600. That was on the Monday, going back here to this day. This was the Thursday, Friday, Monday drop. Boom. But here's where it really tanked. You can use whatever platform you want. If you want to email me and I can refer you to my broker, but you really don't have to use any set place. You do not have to use my place. And I think you can make your charts look like mine pretty much everywhere. Most of the places that are out there now, because of what happened with the merger with Schwab buying Ameritrade, are doing free platforms and free commissions. I pay for mine. So you can, you can email me if you want to refer, but you're going to pay for the platform if you go to my place just so you know. And then obviously the whole thing with E-Trade, then they had to compete against Schwab and Meritrade, and then they did free commissions and free, pl free platforms. I've been at the place I've been at for so long, I don't mind paying and I don't wanna switch. Tra changing places is a pain. Learning new platforms is just a pain. So you'd have to pay if you go to my place. But if you wanna email me, I'll refer you. Sometimes it's worth paying for the service. So I, 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 I get good service. That's the other reason I stay. A lot of these places, you call some 1-800 number, you're talking to a different person every time. But work, do whatever works for you. Again, some people are at prop places. Again, some people are at the Reddit. I mean, their service is terrible. I've never referred anyone to Reddit. I've never traded at Reddit because I knew the service was terrible anyways. In fact, I don't even know if you can call anyone there. 
Their whole system is based on pretty much just no service, so they don't have, that's why everything's so cheap there. And the amount of money you have to put up required to trade there is so cheap. While it works for some people, I do not think that is ideal. Um, but, you know, that is what their whole thing was. So that was one of the reasons I said, why are people surprised that they're upset about what's happening? They have their, I mean, the whole thing with Reddit is no service. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to get any service when you don't pay for anything. You know, you get bupkis. Uh, obviously with Forex, there's only one close and open a, a week. So, you know, you could only trade Forex using gaps once a week. So I don't think you're going to get enough out of it, quite frankly. Now let's talk about the day trade here. Again, we did this. Oh, uh, no, hold on. This was the option. Oh, here's the day trade. Okay, this was 218. So 218, I'll go back to that one minute in a minute. This is the first day, the day that it dropped down. Okay, we entered it short. This is an equity trade at 138.60. Then we added, okay, we added pretty close to the price, but it pulled it down slightly, 138.40. And I wished I'd gotten a bigger move out of this this day, but I didn't, but it was still 1,200 bucks. It was a nice trade. It didn't stop, even in the tail. I'll go back and show you that in a minute. Beginner risk here, you could have made $600. Now let me just go back to that. This was this day. So again, here's the close of the day. I know this is small, but we shorted this here and we got a drop and made this big tally thing. Again, we stayed in the trade, but the way the sizing had to work with the stop, it wasn't as big of a mover as I wanted. It moved better the following days, but it was profit. It was money. 222, 137.80 was the entry. 3,000 shares, risk of 25.50. This is an advanced risk, profit 43.50. This is an advanced risk. You took 400, 500 shares, you could have made 725. So this is 222. This is the day here where it actually had a bigger move down where we shorted it and got a drop. Okay. See that? So anyways, here was another day trade. This is a bullish gap in Twitter, okay? Closed here, gapped up. This is a big, big move up. This was the day of the earnings we did the Twitter. This this is the wrong date here. I don't know why that date's on there. This was on here, this day here. So, you know, you'll have big bullish moves. You'll have big bearish moves. You can make a lot of money in day trades if you're in it, if it moves, how with size? You have to have size, 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 size. And again, here was another option we did in the Twitter. We did the 65 calls. I think I've done every strike and did it. We did the 65s, we did the 68s, um, and we're in some right now, actually, to be honest with you, out till Friday, so we'll see where they go. If the market holds and continues to rally and makes new highs this week, Twitter is gonna go again and get over the high. But this was cheap for an option. 215, sold at 460. Again, more than 100% return on investment. If you do not want to watch the options trains, which I do because I'm here in New York in my apartment because of COVID, I'm not going out much, but you can watch the chart, watch the targets. I do put the targets on the newsletter. If you don't want to do that, you can buy it. Buy it at 215, put an order out at four, just a sell order for her or whatever. If you don't have to watch it, put an order out at 50% profit or 100% profit. Again, this was the move up in here. We've been talking about this all morning. This was a nice testimonial from someone, Jackie. She, she risks a very small risk. So for her to make $1,000 is a, is a great day. And my point being in this is that you don't have to risk a lot to make good money. If you can't afford to, you can't. But if you can, you can make a lot. And again, I've been doing this for a very, very long time, okay? So for people that come to me and people that are, and again, you can have a trial of the trading room if you want to email me for this week. People really need to see results. That's really what counts. That's what takes the conviction to a next level. You can use it for options. You can use it for day trades. It has to be visible income for people to really get behind it. One good gap is all you need a day. This is a Domino's Pizza. We did this last week. It was a short. We did a put in it. We did an option in it. We did a day trade in it. It fell. You really only need one ticker symbol. We're usually looking for the fast moves in and out quick, okay? But you can make a lot of money with the market, but a lot of people lose, why? Simply because they get the direction wrong. 
they get the direction wrong. They're long when they should be short and vice versa, okay? Uh, email for the options newsletter and the live trades, you have to be in the live room. The equity trades, there's no alerts running, you gotta be there live, okay? I don't know what you mean by details. I give the, like, this is the details that you get. I don't have the targets in here, but this targets is in the full letter, which you get the symbol, the strike, the expiration date, and if you're doing a call or put. And then I have news alerts and uh, targets at the bottom of the letter. I didn't put that in here. Anyways, it's getting back to what I was saying. Success is very empowering. So don't give up if you wanna do this. You have to have a system for me. It is GAPS, it's my rating system. I'm rating gaps to find a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, big moves in the day, early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. The whole philosophy is looking at institutional money. If they're buying, if they're selling, if they're shorting it, okay? Then I'm honing it down on a one minute to take the entries. But I'm looking at the daily to make the decisions. And I'm usually looking for one to one for the profits. If I risk a thousand, I'm looking to make a thousand. If it was two thousand, I'm looking to make two thousand. Okay, sometimes you can make more, but that is the general rule. Okay, but it has to do with opportunity that often happens when early in the morning, early in the morning when you're doing it. It is about quality. Specifically, if you're doing this where it's something that you want to do it for a living, you have to book your money early, I think is better, and then stop. Like, let's just say you make $1,000 in the first five minutes of the day. I call a trade, you do it, boom, you get out. That doesn't mean you're trading all day. You have to save the money that you make. You have to save the profits that you make. You have to have goals. You sit down and figure out how you're gonna make those goals, okay? And then you stay on course with those goals, which is not gambling, which is not trading, 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 okay? I think a lot of people right now, and this is COVID, this is the number of years that people have been trading, and again, I've been had the business for a number of years, so I've spoken to many, many people of different ages. They feel like they're not where they want to be financially in life. You can have a full-time job and do this on the side. I think the options work better for that. If you have the time to be in the room in the morning and day trade too, I think that's good because you get my analysis of the market every morning and what I'm looking at. But so many people feel frustrated like they want to get ahead. And again, there's been a big talk lately about inflation, all the costs going up, things that have been happening with COVID, and people have actually raised the prices of things just because of COVID. Uh, I went to, I was going to get, I have a William Sonoma home carpet. It's a nice carpet, it has to be professionally cleaned. I used to pay $400 to get the carpet clean. They, they charge me now 1000 I said, 1000 now? What do you, they're desperate for business. They're nearly shutting the doors. And they quadrupled the price basically. And I'm like, what do you, I said for a thousand dollars, I can buy a new carpet. So what's happening is because of COVID, people are just raising their prices because of COVID as an excuse. And this isn't about, you know, the cost of eggs going up, you know, 52 cents. This is like, people feel like they're not in the way that they want to be right now financially. And you have to pick and choose. You have to pick and choose what you want to spend time on. My class is on a weekend. You may not want to spend 16 hours on a Saturday and Sunday in a class, but mind you, if you do, it is definitely worth the time. It is definitely something that you make. It's an investment for your future, and it's an investment for your future success, okay? And I really think that today's world is just not the same as it was 25 years ago, or even 10 years ago, or five years ago, or even a year ago, all right? What we think about today that we have a secure job, maybe gone tomorrow. I mean, and if you can't believe that because of COVID, I mean, you're, you're not in touch with what's happening in the world. Look at the world economy and the decisions the lawmakers are making for you. Taxes could go up, all of these things. Do you want to create your own future or do you want someone else to determine it? For me, I was always an independent-minded thinking person, like I said. But for years, I did work for big banks and companies. We can be great employees, productive, outgoing, hardworking, and it may not even matter to our employer in the end if the company can't keep you on or if the company goes under. Look at the restaurant industry in particular right now, or even the beauty industry. They're suffering because of COVID. Your industry might fail. It has nothing to do with you. And you could be the best person in the world in your job or your field, and it has nothing to do with you, okay? If you're a skilled person, you can do anything. If you're not, if you don't know how to trade, you can learn. It is a skill. You have to use your mind. Your mind, you have to use it. You have to learn. Many people are not like, oh, I don't want to go back to school. Yeah, you go back to school. You learn something else. You learn a new trade. You change it up. 
That's what you got to do. You can work for yourself in the market. You can create your own job security. You can create your own opportunity by taking it upon yourself to learn how to trade the market and make money trading. Okay. How much, how much time do you have to own or trade after the alerts? Well, most of the trades I send out of the pre-market. Like, I could send out a, a trade at 7 a.m. You're not taking it until the open. So if I send out a trade in the pre-market, you should take it in the first 5, 10, 15 minutes of the day. If I send out a trade at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it's probably a trade that you would get in and you were not going to get out by 4. You just take it before 4 and you're in it overnight until the next day. But most of the trades are in the pre-market. So you take them into the open. Okay? It's not like I'm sending out trades at 11, 11, 15, 12, 12, 15 for trades that go that day. That's not how the letter is. I'm looking at gaps in the pre-market. I get up early. I'm looking in the morning. I'll look, I might send Zoom out tonight. You're not taking it tonight. You're taking it tomorrow into the open. So it's not a time issue. It's, it's you got to prepare for the morning. You're looking in the morning. Most of the trades, you've got to get organized for the morning beforehand. I usually know exactly what I'm doing way before 9.30. If I get it, I take it. If I don't, I don't, okay? So anyways, it's about job security. Job security is very important. Anyways, let me just flip through some of these here because I'm seeing I'm running out of time and I do want to talk about the Zoom. I talked about my class. It's a checklist. This is what you learn in the class. It teaches a strategy and how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches students how to play the stock on the day, and the course teaches students chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. It is a complete system to learn how to trade, and you can do it for overnight gaps, options, equity trades, you know, all of it. So I'm going to skip through this here because I did talk about options, and I'm kind of running out of time. I had some other trades in here, but I, I, we can go back to them if I have time. Here's the results so far year to date. It doesn't include today's spy. Good results with an advanced risk. So 107.823 for the year. These are all the day trades we did. This isn't any options. Okay. All of these here and, and through Friday. Friday was Foot Locker. I don't have that in here. Foot Locker was a good short. We shorted it. It was a gap down. It was a nice short. That was Friday. So you can learn how to do this. You can work from home and you can do it. And it really can change your life. And whatever the reason you're doing it for, to change jobs, for extra money, to buy a car, go on a vacation because you were sick and tired of working for somebody else. I say do it for whatever reasons you have. Keep that mind in, go in your head, in your thoughts. And for me, it was about changing careers. I wanted to get out of the mortgage industry. Things were changing. It was becoming very difficult to get loans approved. So you've got to make the time to do it. I mean, I get how everybody's busy. And I'm not married and I don't have kids. But I know everyone has a million things to do. But you've got to make the time to do this if you want to start to do it. Okay? The class is a system you learn in two days. It's one strategy. It's based on technical analysis and gaps. And the next class is March 13th and 14th. It's 9 to 5 Eastern. Class tuition is $69.99 US dollars. You can go to my website and look at all the classes if you want. It's www.thestockswish.com. Or you can email me. I'm also doing a webinar special. I think the support after the class helps. You sign up by Friday. You will get the trading room free through the end of the year. This is huge. Huge. We've had good results this year. Get all my calls in the trade room free to the end of the year. You've got to sign up by Friday, March 5th. Um, and if you want to trial, email me at melissathestockswish.com. Now, let me see if I can bring up my chart. I don't know if I have. Do I have to stop sharing to bring up the chart? Let's see. Can you see my chart there? Uh, no, you, you might have to. Yeah, you probably have to stop sharing and then reshare okay, let's uh, on see. those chart window. Talk about the Zoom quick. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, I wanted to just, I know I have like two more minutes here. This is out tonight, and here's what I'm looking for in this. Can everybody see the Zoom? Let me just set this up here. Again, I'm not in this. I don't know what it's going to do. I just know what I'm looking for, okay? In an ideal world, okay, I always say in an ideal world, in an ideal world, Zoom would gap up, okay? I think this would be a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful long if it gaps up correctly. And the range, 
that I'm looking for is about 60 points up or 60 points down in either direction. So that's just a rough estima estimation there. Again, I'm not in this yet, but I prefer, I would prefer to go long zoom. Now that doesn't mean I'm not gonna short it. It doesn't mean I'm not gonna short it. If it, if it gaps down, I'm gonna rate it as a short, but I'm telling you right now, this is a better long. If it sets up right tonight on the earnings, you can watch it. Now I will say one thing about this, it moves like a banshee. So you really have to watch it. So this could, like, let's just say this does something tonight, big up or big down. You really have to double, triple check it in the morning to make sure it's good. I do think this is on its own. I don't think it needs the market. I do think the market's following through. We can quickly look at that. Would the market help this if this does gap up and run tomorrow? Yes, but I don't think it's gonna kill it if it gaps up and the market falls tomorrow, but I don't think that's gonna happen either. Here, did we get to 390? Basically. All right, thanks for having me, everyone. Thanks so much, David.